we're in late July here and we're getting to the to the finish line as far as weed control goes and, and doing and doing a trying to do a good job trying to control a lot of these weeds in, in our later planted crops. Primarily of course it's our double crop soybeans this year and because of the weather we've had we've actually gosh been like the Garden of Eden it's rained almost all the time. It's good for a lot of the corn and soybeans and cotton that's been planted but for uh, these later planted crops it's an issue to get out there timely with a herbicide application and in some cases even plant it. So we have soybeans that still are probably going to be planted this week and we're into the last week of July. So when you got that late of a planting date, uh, it can make a real difference on what herbicides you choose to try and to control, to control the pigweed. So if we have Extend soybeans, of course we can go out with a dicamba product, an Ingenia or an Extend to Max up to R1. And our one's about now in these beans, so they're they're sitting about old oh, ankle boot top hot, tall, and that's that's right at our one, getting close to to the cutoff time when we can no longer spray uh, those dicamba products. Those do have a good fit here in that there's no recrop. Back to if you're going to put a cover crop out, or next year if you're worried about corn or grain sorghum. There are some other herbicides though that we readily use in in our late planted soybeans that we have to do some real consideration as far as what the follow crop is going to be, whether it's the cover crop or the cash crop next spring. But something to be mindful of in herbicide applications in a more traditional crop system is uh, products like Femesfen or Flexstar or any products that contain that. Um, when we're spraying these, there's an, a 10-month rotation into corn, so the follow-up year there may be an uh, impact as far as herbicide carryover into the following corn crop. And then another one, uh, most people don't think of as classic or clarimuron. Any of the premixes that contain that product can also affect next year's corn crop. And then with all the herbicide management strategies that we're looking here at UT, uh, cover crops is one that uh, growers across the state have started to adopt. And if you're going to think about putting cover crop out this fall, uh, some of the herbicides you spray in these late planted beans may affect the biomass of that cover crop. And those go as your warrants, duels, zidua. Those can uh, reduce the biomass of your small city broads leaves, such as your crimson clover and vetch. Um, and then other herbicides, such as femesifen, again, have an effect on those small city broadleaf uh, cover crops. So the question is, what can we spray to avoid carryover into next year's corn crop or cover crop? Um, in conventional or Roundup Ready systems, we can come back with Ultra Blazer or Cobra. Um, if you have PPO resistant Palmer Amaranth, hopefully you planned ahead and got Liberty Link soybeans in the ground. Therefore, you can come back with Liberty and take care of that Palmer Amaranth. 